All right, hi, um, I've only got one um, person that's joined me so far, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Presuming we'll probably have some more join us here. So um, yeah, we're gonna go over, look over assignment nine. Uh, we're looking at uh, three data structures here for this unit, basically. I've already done the preliminary, so I've already um, accepted the assignment and cloned it and have my repository set up and everything, so. Um, let's see, before we get into it, um, let's, let, let, let's, let me talk a little bit about the files that you're given and, and the setup. So there's a few things different. I mean, um, a lot of the setup should be familiar um from our past three or four assignments now at this point so there is a hierarchy of defined for this this tree data structure um so we've got our binary tree which is an abstract uh, base class an uh, abstract data type an adt uh we are only doing a linked list version uh, not really a linked list We're, we are only doing a version of with nodes that are linked together to represent our tree. You can represent trees um, in an array. Um, and in fact, um, like a, that's a common way to implement like a heap uh, is as a tree, but inside of an array. Um, but our textbook talks a little bit about some of those, but, but we won't look at, at an array-based implementation of a tree. We'll just be using uh, pointers linked to nodes and things. So. Um, and on that note, then there is um, a separate class called the binary tree node. So we actually pulled this out into a separate class. Let's, let's take a look at that real quickly before we see jump into task one and see if anybody has any questions on task one. So um, one thing you should be aware of um, on this assignment, um, we've got this binary tree node. So you're going to be using these binary tree nodes, but unlike before, um, This is a full uh, class now. So it's not just a simple structure, um, it's, it's a full class. So, so the binary tree node, um, so, so when we were doing our linked lists, we were using just a simple structure that had a, the, 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 the variables, the private member variables for that structure were mostly just like a next pointer and then the value. So, so it's similar here. So, so we're using a full class now instead of just a simple structure for our node um, called a binary tree node. Uh, but of course, this is a tree structure. So we've got two pointers. So every node has a pointer um, uh, for, to support a binary tree structure to the left subchild and the right subchild. So you'll notice that there's two pointers in here um, um, that are referential um, uh, to a binary tree node. And the other thing you'll notice, so um, we could have done this earlier and we started talking about it here. So this will become actually um, more important for our very last unit where we talk about uh, dictionaries, which are really uh, an abstraction where you define um, um, everything in terms of a key, which is like an index um, is, is how you look up uh, some particular record and then a value, but we started doing that for this unit here. So now instead of just a value, our node actually has a key value pair, right? Um, so we'll, we'll actually, in our next assignment, we'll actually continue abstracting that out. We'll have a whole separate class for the key value pair. But um, at this point, um, um, this is more realistic um, than what we've been doing so far where we've just had the value and kind of the value was the key for our list or for our queues and things. So most likely with the way that you nor we normally want to use data structures is we want to keep containers of things uh, and there'll be some simple item that the key that we index it or that we use to look up um, it, you know, to find a particular value in our collection, okay? So um, I, this isn't as common when we're talking about queues and, um, 
and stacks because basically for queues and stacks, you don't need to look up the item. You just need to know what the item is that's at the front of the queue or the top of the stack, right? So, so you don't, it's not as useful to break things up um, so that they have like key value pair pairings like this, okay? But whenever you're talking about lists or talking about a container that you're using to um, store a collection of items, and, and a general list is like a container and, and a binary tree is like a container. And uh, for our last unit, a dictionary is a container. So normally when you have containers like that, you have like a big record, a big structure. That, that's really what your value is. So your value isn't something simple, like an int or a float. Um, it'll be like a record. And then the key will be how you index and how you look up and how you store and refer to the items. So, so think of like a database. So your key could be something like, you know, the, the, the ID, like maybe your campus-wide ID, if, if this was like a collection of student records, or it could be your employee ID if you're building a database of employee records or something like that. And then the value in that example would really be another class, a structure or a class like let's say employee information. So, you know, you'd have employee name and address and salary information and um, um, the, um, uh, their job title and, and all that kind of stuff, all right? So anyway, that, that's a little bit of an aside, kind of um, uh, this will be a little bit more important for our very last um, assignment where we get explicit about key value pairs for our dictionary and stuff, so. So anyway, uh, you should be aware of that. And, and the other thing about that is that um, since we're actually using a class, um, these are private now. So you can't just directly access the key and the value and the left and the right pointer. So if, if you want to manipulate the nodes in the tree, you need to use the accessor methods, okay? So whenever you're, access, whenever you're manipulating these binary tree nodes for your tasks here, um, you have to use get key and get value and set key and set value, right? Um, to get and set the values for the nodes when you create them. All right. And, and uh, you won't have to make any changes to this class. So the binary tree node um, 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 should already be complete, um, but you know, you might want to look at the uh, implementation as well. So, you know, as usual, you know, the, the only thing you really need to use class is the header file, which defines the APA, API. You know, so that defines all the things you can do with a binary tree node. And the things that you mostly need to do is be able to set key and set value and get key and get value and, and to construct new nodes with a key value pair. Right? Oh, and set the left and, and, and set the right, right? So when you're maintaining the tree, you're going to be setting the left child um, and, and, and asking if it has a left child and, and setting the right child and asking if it has a right child. So, um, but, um, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but um, some of this code, even though you have to change it, might be useful. Um, or how you actually have to do stuff for the, uh, the, the task for your binary tree here. So uh, anyway, let, let's, let's move on. So, um, so for task one, um, so yeah, I actually accidentally uh, moved that tag there. So um, just a second, there we go. Um, So for this assignment, we're going to be implementing, uh, again, a couple of the missing methods for our binary tree. Um, so uh, insert, find, uh, get minimum, delete minimum. So, so um, we're really basically insert, uh, um, implementing the insert, find, and remove. All right, but remove is a little bit complicated for a tree structure. So in order to implement the remove, um, we implement a couple, I have you guys uh, finish the implementation of a couple of private methods, get minimum and delete minimum, which will be reused to make it easier to implement 
um, the, the remove method to remove an item from our binary tree. So let's look at insert. So um, as usual, um, and yeah, start. At, feel free if you have questions. Um, uh, let me know. Uh, as usual, let's, let's get started on it. So um, uh, for this um, assignment, uh, there are two test files. The one you won't have to make any modification for the test binary tree node. So that's just testing the uh, the implementation of the binary tree node um, that you're going to be using, but not modifying. Right. So all those tests should be passed in the binary tree, test binary tree node. Um, so to get started, um, um, for task one, um, well, there's a couple of uncommented tests for um, testing the constructor for the L binary tree. But, um, but yeah, you should, as usual, start by uncommenting the test for the task one. Um, so there's more than one test for task one here. Um, but but yeah, so um, so just an example, um, this I, this might be the first time that we've seen a slightly more complex um, use of templates here. So so yeah, our template class for the binary tree node um, and for the binary tree, let me open up the binary tree API as well here. So, um, so for both of these, um, there's actually two template, um, two templatized, you know, generic classes, a key and a value, right? For the binary tree node. And um, for our actual binary tree class, key and a value, right? Um, and that's because and let me look at the constructor for our L binary tree, which again is is I don't know if L is a good name here. It's it's the using links or pointers um, to manage and construct the binary tree here. So. Um, so as usual, the L binary tree is um, just a um, a subclass of the that publicly inherits from binary tree. Um, so you know, to get started, like as usual, you'll want to uh, the, there. We did comment out the uh, API methods, the, these virtual methods that you have to implement for um, each of these tasks. So insert, find, and remove. Uh, the, the private methods are not part of the API, which is normal, right? So you don't, don't have those defined in the, the base class. Um, so, you know, as usual, one way to get started uh, for like the insert, you could copy so, so your implementation of the insert method should have exactly the same signature. It's just not a virtual function anymore. So we could um, just copy that over. All right. So but yeah, back to my original thought just to finish this off. So. Um, the normal way that you construct a binary tree um, is, um, or, or the, the normal way you construct a binary tree node anyway, which will be more important for uh, the way that you guys are doing things is you give it a particular key and value, okay? So, um, so like, yeah, when we're inserting a new value into the tree, we give it both a key and a value, right? Which, pa which are passed in as constant references. Um, which is kind of the normal way when you're working with classes in C++, object-oriented things. If you're not going to be changing that class, you should pass them in as reference. Um, so it's efficient in case it's a really big class, but pass it in as constant, um, showing that you're not going to be modifying those, either of those. So. Um, so anyway, back to the test here finally. So, so um, I had uncommented this, I guess I haven't saved this yet, but I had commented it. Um, 
because you know we've got multiple tests. So for our, our first test, um, and, and you can probably just get the stuff working for the first test, and then try uncommenting like the second or subsequent test. So the first test is just a um, a tree that maps has integer keys mapping to integer um, values, right? So whenever we insert, uh, we have we just uh, always have the key and the value be the same. Um, uh, to test here. So, so we insert like key 10 that has a value of 10 here. Um, all right, so insert should be should be clear. So let me talk about the algorithm, um, although I'll go ahead and get the stub working here and then I'll, that'll be as far as I go here. Uh, and then we can talk about the implementation, right? So um, um, uh, let's get insert. So it shouldn't be compiling yet because we um, um, haven't. Um, um, so we defined it. So it should allow me to compile the the test now. Um, but we won't be able to link together until we actually have at least some sort of a stub implementation of insert, right? So we should have an error here for uh, the undefined reference to insert. So let's go ahead and put a stub in there so we can at least get it to compile. So insert is a, a void function, right? So it doesn't return anything. So our stub function can just um, return um, or do nothing basically, right? So, so I decided to put the insert after the clear method here. So here, you know, insert is just to insert, um, uh, I guess it's really kind of a key value paradigm. Well, maybe a little bit long for my brief description there, but. We're going to be inserting the given key value pair item into our binary tree collection. Key the value. Reference the key value pair to be uh, inserted into our tree and like this is reference to the value. Well, again, um, you know, I encourage you to always do the function documentation while you're doing the stub when you're getting started, right? Shouldn't be an afterthought and you definitely shouldn't be checking in, for example, task one, uh, where you've got a working function, but you don't have your function documentation for, for it. You know, that's not really complete yet until you have the function, the function documentation, and the implementation work. So. Um, so that should compile. So, um, uh, oh, right, forgot. Forgot a few things here. So this is a member of um, our L binary tree function that we're trying to implement. I'm going to parameterize, it's a template class to parameterize and we value. Um, I should make it happier, I think. All right. So anyway, once you get that far, you know, um, at this point, uh, people hopefully have had a lot of practice on this kind of thing. So this allows us now to actually start um, implementing because uh, we should be able to run our test. Uh, we'll just be failing on our first insert here. So, of course, an easy thing I can get um, 
could get the get size to work because I know somewhere that we have to, you know, we, we've got, um, 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 as, as usual, we've got a size defined, all those defined in the base class, right? Um, um, but yeah, again, because it's in the base class, uh, we do have to use the, 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 the template class. We have to use that bit of craftiness to disambiguate the name, um, but, um, So when we're inserting an item, the size should increase as a result of inserting. Um, so yeah, yeah, make it happier on the side, but of course now we got to actually get the value in there. All right. So, um, so yeah, so I didn't give a whole lot away here because. Um, 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 I had, I had kind of shown um, that um, the signature. So the way that that these methods, all these methods that you're going to be implementing, um, are going to be using recursion. So you're going to be getting some more practice writing recursive functions. Okay. So the normal way that you call a method on a recursive data structure like a binary tree here um, is is, is the, a normal user of the collection just wants to insert a value. Or now, you know, we're adding this this um, complexity. So, so we want to insert key value pairs, basically. So the value along with the index, the, the thing that we use to refer to the value when we're looking it up or removing it. So it's a key. Um, but actually insert the value, um, 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 we're keeping, uh, so, so the binary tree keeps a, a tree data structure, uh, I probably should set up. Um, um, so, um, uh, you know, I had, I had a lot of lecture videos about trees here. So, so hopefully you've, you've watched those or will watch those here today if, if you haven't got to them yet. Um, so the, the, the basic algorithm is um, uh, we need a, a function that can work recursively. So the way the recursive function works, so all these, there'll be a, a private um, um, corresponding function to the public API function that has the same signature, or well, it takes the key and the value like the public function does, but it also takes the node uh, because this is how we're going to, and it also returns a binary tree node as well, pointer to a binary tree node, okay? Um, and, and this is how we implement the recursion here because, um, all the insert function is going to do, the, the public one, is call the private version on the root of the tree, right? Um, so if I can go back to our binary tree, L binary tree. So for our implementation, um, for our L binary tree, which uses pointers here or, or, or links, um, um, we basically have one private member variable, which is the root of the tree. Right, and the root of the tree. If you look in, at the constructors here, uh, um, so, so the, the size of the tree should be zero initially, and the root of the tree is just the null or the null point. Right, if, if you construct an empty binary tree. Right. Um, um, oh, and by the way, um, just kind of as an aside, so I just have to see that. But but yeah, after you get your insert working, you should uncomment this from the uh, the uh, constructor using an array because it uses insert to construct our arrays here. So, um, so what that means is again, I don't think I'm giving anything too much away here, but but to give you get you started on this. Um, if you haven't already, um, so um, you could leave the the handling of the size um, in your uh, the, the the public function here. And I'll go ahead and leave that here for now. Uh, it probably makes the most well. Um, uh, the other uh, approach is 
in, in your, when you're writing the recursive implementation um, at the point where you actually create the new node, you, that, 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 that would probably be the, the most logical place to increment the size. Cause you know, if I've created the new node and I'm about to insert it um, um, somewhere in my tree that, that the size is also correspondingly of the tree is increased by one. But mostly the, the insert function is really not doing anything. So all the real work is being done by the private. So, so the public insert function. Um, so this is the public uh, version of the insert API uh, that is called and used by users of this class, for example, right? So really all the insert is doing is, is, is mostly calling the private insert function to do the actual work. Um, so remember, um, so here, remember the, the private insert um, is going to be returning um, a node result, a binary tree node pointer result. Okay, so that's because, for example, when initially when the tree is empty, it's going to create a new node, um, set that new node, and, and it, it it just returns that new node. It doesn't set that to be root. So that so there is one very important thing that this um, public function does when it's calling. You know, it doesn't really have to increase the size. That could be done um, in the appropriate place for the, the private function. But um, if the new node that's created becomes the, the root of the tree because the tree is empty and now it's not empty, um, uh, we do have to assign the, the resulting, because initially if the root is, is null, we're passing in null um, as our root. But the, the private insert should be creating the new node. So that's the base case, right? That's, that's one of your base cases. Um, and and creating the new root node and returning that as the result. All right? Um, and if the, 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 the tree is not empty, root is not going to be null. It's going to be pointing to a pointer. Um, and uh, you can then. Um, well, um, that's the, the uh, recursive case for our recursive function here. So, um, all right. So, so notice, I mean, you don't, you don't have to do anything special. Again, this is an example also of overloading. Right, so, so we're relying on overloading. We're using the same name, um, and this is a common way to implement public-private um, corresponding methods for, for recursion like this. Uh, but since the signature is different, so this takes three parameters. It takes the same key and value, but takes um, a, um, a binary tree node pointer um, as the first parameter. And so if the signature is, is, is different, um, it's able to, to differentiate, right? Um, and uh, this shouldn't compile now. Um, so there'll be a compiler error because I'm trying to invoke a method that we haven't defined yet. Uh, but again, I, I, I kind of gave this to you as well. So um, um, a private version of insert. It should go into the private methods here. So we'll put it after the private. And there, and there were some examples. So there was the, the string um, and the clear, both were already implemented for you, um, but you know they work on the binary tree as well. So you can look at those for more um, examples of how this sort of recursion works and, and the split between the public API and private versions of these methods here. So. Um, Anyway, so um, 
So again, you know, th this is our private version of the insert method that that takes a binary tree node as its first parameter and it returns a binary tree result here, right? Um, and uh, yeah, to get this compiling again, let's go ahead and enter in our stub here. Um, so this should go after the private clear um, here. Again, this is a um, this is still a template member function, templatized on key value pairs, um, and it's a member of the um, even though it's a private member, it's still a member of the L binary tree key value um, templatized class here. So. Pretty long line. I wish I didn't have to check my style file. So, that, yeah, the style file and, um, makes it back into one line there. So, anyway. Um, so this is the um, Private recursive implementation. Insertion into the binary tree. Uh, so this method does the actual work of creating and inserting a new node into the tree. So recursive algorithm. Right. And um, it's three parameters and return um, Uh, I'm gonna. I would normally be more descriptive on these, so um, um, I guess I could. Uh, bring you my description for key and value here for the um, the um, public method. So. Um, Right. Um, anyway, so um, oh, um, this is a stub function, or I'm going to put in a stub function here. But um, um, yeah, we should return something. Um, um, so to be a stub, we could just return small pointer um, until we're ready to try and actually implement this. For example, it will at least allow us to compile again. So that's as much as I'm going to kind of show you on um, uh, implementing it. So we got the the stuff up here. So let's let's let's, let's finish up uh, on the insert here. But but we'll talk about the um, uh, the algorithm. Okay. So your your private um, insert function. Um, I mean, all these functions, the, the private ones, are going to be recursive in order to work on this this binary tree structure, which is a recursive or example of a recursive data structure here. So the base case is if we're given um, a null pointer, that means that we have found the the you know that that that's our terminating case. We we found the location um, where 
a new node needs to be created and inserted. So for the base case, uh, if you're given a null pointer, you're going to create a new node, and I gave you that. Um, although, again, this is similar to what you've had to do before um, for our list structures, um, um, our linked list structures here. So you create a new node um, um, you know, using the constructor for the, the the, the binary tree node. So you just have to give it the key and value pair that you're given in the insert method to create a new node uh, and then return this new node as the result. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, if, if the, the, the node that you're given is null, um, just create a new node that inserts the key value into it and return it, right? And notice, I mean, that will work to, um, because if you do that for the, for the private here. So instead of returning null pointer, if I create a new node and return that. So, so think about what happens for the, um, the, the, the public method here, because if the tree is, is empty, the, the root node is gonna be null. So when I call uh, insert with null for my um, first parameter, it'll create a new node and just return that. And I will assign that to become the new root of the tree, right? And like I was saying, um, I mean, it would work fine to have the size here, but um, to me, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, um, but um, it seems to, to make more sense uh, for that base case. Um, Um, so it seems to me more logical um, that the place where you create the node is also the place where you should be uh, maintaining the size of your tree as well. So that, that's probably where I would put that um, personally instead of putting it um, in the, uh, the public method. Right? But again, this should only happen once. So, so you know, um, uh, and the base case will only happen once. It'll happen. Uh, at the point where you find that the pointer is null, right? So, um, so that's the base case. And then the general case, um, you know, if, if you get that, so if the node is not null, you have to find, you have to search the tree to find um, uh, like a null left subchild or a null right subchild. Uh, which is where the new node needs to be created and then that new node be set as the that, that left or right child instead of being null, right? Um, and, and, you know, so, um, you know, as we discussed in our lecture videos this week, um, the, the property, the thing that defines a binary search tree is that all children to the left are less than the key Right, so, so we also um, um, assume that we can compare keys uh, like, like we assumed for the uh, priority queue last week, right? Um, so we compare keys and, and the, the, the key comparison defines the, the ordering of items less than or greater than, right? So all key value pairs um, that are on the left child or, or left subtree from a particular node should be less, the, the key should be less than the key of that node, right? Um, or less than or equal to. So, so, I mean, you have to handle equal. Keys can be equal uh, for this particular collection. So, so anything that's less than or equal should end up on the left subchild, uh, left subtree. Um, otherwise, um, if, when the key is greater than, than the node's key, um, you wanna go to the right, the right subtree, right? So again, notice here, this is where you, where, you know, these nodes again are classes. So you, you can't just access the, the left child or the right child. You have to use like the get key um, and, and the get left child and the get right child, okay? So, um, So in both cases, you're going to be calling um, 
Um, so, so let me just look at that again real quickly. Um, so if you look at your um, binary tree node dot uh, HPP, um, and then you have to call get key in order to compare the, the key that's trying to be inserted to the key in the node, the, the current node, right? Um, and then um, um, oh, and, and I kind of skipped over. So uh, for the base case, when you create your new node, um, you're going to have to after you create the new. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, you, when you create the the, the no, new node, you can use the constructor just giving it the key and value. So you don't have to use the the set key or set value. We'll have to use those later here. So, uh, but um, But um, basically, um, uh, again, for, for when you're calling this recursively here, um, so, so when we say you need to search to the left or the right, that means that you need to, to call binary, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the insert recursively. Um, so you want to call it with, with the key value pair recursively, but you want to call it either the node um, the, the left child or the right child, okay? Depending on if the key is less than or equal or the key is greater than, okay? So, so the call with the, the left child, you have to call it, um, 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 you have to use the get left method, right? So you'll wanna say node get left um, to call it recursively on the left subtree or node get right to call it on the right subtree. Right. So that, that's calling it, right? And, and again, when you, um, um, when you call insert, it's gonna return a new node or, or it's gonna return a node. It might be a new node that it creates um, or, um, an exist, or it could just be an existing node, right? So um, as is described here, Um, so, you know, basically, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's described really well here, but, but basically when you, when you call insert recursively, um, um, it's going to be returning a node. Okay. So that, that node that it, that it returns might be a new node that it creates. So, so the, the value that's returned, the, the node that's returned back from you, um, um, you need to set your node to be equal to that return result, okay? Because um, it could be that you're calling it recursively, but the node that you're calling it on is, is a null pointer. And then your recursive call is then gonna end up hitting the base case, which will, will create a new node and return that. And then you'll want to replace that, that node that was the null pointer with that new node that was created, right? Um, but then the other thing, so, so for both of these, um, um, so the, the re return result from calling it recursively, you want to assign your node to be that result um, when you call insert recursively. But then also at the very last thing that I'm sure is described here, you want to return the node again, okay? Because um, it could be that that, that, that node um, was, uh, a new node was created. Right, so, so whatever the node is uh, that was returned back from um, not calling um, insert recursively, you wanna return that, right? Okay, um, yeah, so I kinda wanna move on here. Did, um, um, so that was, you know, the insert method. Anybody add um, 
some questions about the insert here. Um, Um, yeah, so let's, um, um, and I'll go a little bit, well, I'll go relatively quick through the fine here. The, the fine will probably be simpler than the insert, um, but but in order to be able to set up tests and stuff, we did do the insert first. Uh, I would have normally maybe have liked to have had the find, uh, but we can't really test the find until we can um, uh, construct trees and insert stuff into them. So. So the, the structure is similar. I mean, you're going to have a public and a private method. Um, um, although the the, um, the the signature is different, right? So um, if you look at the signature in binary tree on HPP for find, um, it takes a key as input. So basically, find is searching for a key, um, and if it finds the, the 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 node with that key value pair that has that key, it returns the corresponding value um, as a result, right? Um, but um, you know you're going to need to have a public version of find um, that has this. API, the signature, and then a private version of find um, that has basically the same signature, you know, it returns a value, um, but it takes um, a binary tree node pointer as the first parameter and then, and then a key as the second parameter. Okay. Um, and then, you know, and then also the recursive structure uh, is similar, although simpler. So you don't have to worry about setting the node. Um, you just simply, you know, if, if um, so yeah, for the, for the base case, uh, if, if you ever call it and that first node um, is the null pointer, that means that the search has failed. So in that case, um, so your base case, you're actually going to be throwing an exception. Um, so, so throw, the you know they, they tried to search for uh, a key value pair that wasn't in the collection, so we, we throw a binary tree key not found exception. Um, so otherwise, um, oh, there's two. I don't know if I call this a general case. So kind of another base case um, is also a successful search. Um, so um, if, if the the node isn't the null pointer, and then that means it actually has it holds a key value pair. So in that case, you should also test if the, um, the node's key is equal to the key that's being searched for. And if it is equal, that's another one where you can return success. So in that case, you return the value corresponding to the key, right? Um, otherwise, um, the search hasn't failed because the node wasn't null, but we didn't find the key either. So we have to recursively search either the left or the right um, subtree. Right. So, you know, again, like you have to do for insert, if the key is less than or equal, um, uh, and, and see, I need to update the description there. So you have to be careful. So uh, we should always be using less than or equal to go to the left subtree. So if the key is, oh, oh no, sorry. Oh, no, that, that's why. So, I mean, if the key is equal, that means you found it. Um, so there, there's a little bit of, of something that we didn't handle um, in this. Um, um, assignment. So, so our, our tree data structure can even have equal keys, but um, um, if there are equal keys on there, you'll always end up getting the, the first one that was inserted um, if you do a find on the equal key, right? Because as soon as you find something that's equal, you return that immediately. Um, so that's why, yeah, I mean, you, you don't really have to search if it's less than or equal. Um, because it shouldn't be equal. You already handled that case before this. So anyway, if it's less than, you want to call the private find recursively on the left child, um, the, the left pointer of our binary tree node. Um, otherwise, it should be greater, and you'd want to call find on the right. So.
All right, um, questions about find. I think for most, like I said, I think for most people, you know, if you can get past the insert, you should be able to do the find. Um, and then, you know, um, remove is complicated. Well, yeah, so, so um, uh, the get minimum and the delete minimum, I hope aren't too difficult, um, but uh, if you have those, they do make remove much simpler. So let's go through those. Um, so, so these should both, get minimum and delete minimum should both be private functions. Okay, these aren't part of the public API. So these aren't things that you normally, a normal user of a tree or a list um, doesn't need to call things like this, right? Um, so let's, let's just concentrate on describing get minimum here. Um, so all get minimum does is if you give it like a starting node, and then this node doesn't necessarily have to be the root of the tree. In fact, uh, the normal usage of get minimum is to start at some non-root value. Um, that's what remove does, right? So remove basically one of the things that we're going to do is, is we need we're going to search first search and find the, the node that we need to remove. And then from that location, we're going to be calling get minimum to find the, the, the minimum, um, the, 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 the node that holds the minimum value in that subtree. Now, to find the minimum value from a particular starting point, it's pretty simple. Um, you just keep going to the left child, right? Because the minimum is going to all, for any particular subtree, or any, any particular node uh, that's a starting point, if you just keep following the left children from that node, um, assuming that your binary tree has been properly maintained so that all um, lesser or equal, lesser, lesser than or equal to values are going to be on the left subchildren, left subtrees, um, you can just follow the left pointer um, until you find the null pointer, right? So, but all, in this case, you know, you don't want to check if the null, if the node is null, you want to check if the node's left subtree, left, left pointer is null, right? Because you want to stop, you, you don't want to stop when, when the node is null, you want to stop when its left child is null. That indicates that that value for that node must be the minimum that we were originally searching for um, here, right? So yeah, um, um, all right. Oh, and if I wasn't clear, I mean, these, these methods, so for task three and four, you've only got one method to implement. So there's no public get minimum, no public delete minimum. You've just got the private, right? Um, Oh, and notice that uh, you shouldn't be returning the value. So, so basically, get minimum takes a, a point, a binary tree node pointer as input, and, and it returns the, the same thing. So, so you, you've got a pointer as input, and you're returning a binary tree node pointer as output, right? So besides recursion, you also get a lot more practice with pointers and things uh, in this assignment as well. Um, So yeah, if, if you find um, a node that doesn't have a left subtree, then you just return this node. Otherwise, you just call get minimum recursively on the left subtree, okay? So get minimum should be a relatively simple function, relatively quick one, right? Um, um, and then get minimum, if you, if you can get the, if you, if, if you can implement the get minimum, the delete minimum has a similar structure, but it's a slightly more complicated. Um, uh, but it does have the same signature, um, right? So it takes uh, a pointer 
to a node, uh, binary tree node as input, um, and it will return a pointer to the node as its result, to some node as its result. Um, So again, basically, we have kind of two parts for this binary um, recursion. So, so we're, we're searching recursively to find the node that has the minimum value. But then uh, instead of just returning it, we're going to be deleting it in this case, right? So your base case, um, 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 instead of returning this node, so, so it looks similar to the get minimum, but what we want to do is we want to return um, the right subtree. Um, so, so if the node has, has no left subtree, that means that we've recursively traversed to the, the node with the minimum value. So the, the, the right subtree contains all the values that are um, um, that are the, the, the ones that are just more than um, this current minimum value that we're about to delete, if that makes sense, okay? If that doesn't make sense, I mean, all, all you have to do is, 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 is yeah, is, is just return the right subtree. But the right subtree could be null as well. So it could be that, that this node is a leaf node, but that's fine. So, so just return the right subtree, whether it's null or it might, be that there's some actual values um, that are bigger than this minimum um, that are being maintained here. So. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna be re deleting this node uh, in our remove here, um, and we're gonna reattach that right subtree somewhere else, basically, right? Um, otherwise, uh, again, this will be similar, if not exactly the same, as, in, as when you're doing the get minimum. So otherwise, uh, we just search to the left. Um, um, oh, um, there is a difference, though. So um, um, So um, to kind of explain this, so what we need to do is um, we do need to use the return value from calling uh, delete minimum recursively. Right? Um, and um, we, what we want to do is set our left subtree to whatever is returned. Okay, so normally um, uh, if, if we haven't finished the search list, search yet, we're just going to return um, ourself in this general case, right? And, and nothing will happen. But for the space case, again, remember, we're returning the right subtree. So what that does then, um, because we're going to be deleting um, that node from the tree. So by, by setting the, the, the left subtree to what's returned from, from calling itself recursively, um, that effectively um, deletes the minimum node um, out of out of this tree here, right? Um, and if you don't see why, I encourage you to try that, you know, to, to draw that out on a piece of paper on what's happening here. So that, that kind of important. That's kind of a secret to the remove here, how this delete minimum works here. But 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 by doing as what's described here, so in the general case, um, we recursively call get minimum um, and then always set our left subtree to be what is returned from calling ourselves recursively, right? And so in the base case, you're gonna be returning the right subtree. In the general case, you're gonna be returning um, um, the, the node after you possibly set uh, the node's left subtree to be, be what is returned um, from calling um, delete minimum recursively here, okay?
Professor, so in task four, we're just returning the node itself after we implement all the functions above, but ultimately we are just returning the node itself. Um, yes, the, the, on the general case. So on the base case, you're, you're going to be return, always returning the right um, um, subtree node. But yeah, in the general case, uh, after you assign, you're returning the node um, itself. So, so just returning its, its, the node that was passed in as input gets returned um, as the result. So that, that's what normally happens, oh. but in the base case, uh, you don't return the node itself, you return the right sum child. So that, that's where the difference happens on what's returned here. Uh, that worked out just fine. I was just returning the left part of the node, left side of the node, that's what got messed up. It's working fine now. Thank you, Professor. Sure. Um, All right, good. Yeah, other questions about that? So, so yeah, again, you know, um, uh, if you don't understand why, and, and I know uh, 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 we should draw this out, right? So, 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 so again, it might help um, to, to draw this out, um, like, like on a whiteboard or a piece of paper for yourself to kind of see what's happening here. So think about the, the, the base case um, um, and, and it returning the left subchild, and then what happens when it, or, it returns the right subtrial when it gets down to uh, the end of the recursion, and then what happens on the node after that. So when you return the right subchild, you end up returning, end up re replacing your left subchild with the with the right subchild um, by doing this as described here. Um, okay. So those are prerequisites. So um, you know there are other ways you could possibly implement remove, but this uh, and 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 still once you have the get minimum and the delete minimum um, remove, this um, still takes uh, a little bit of understanding to get it to work correctly. Um, but but yeah, um, 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 let's talk about uh, the algorithm that's described here. Um, so remove is a public function, right? So it's going to have a public private uh, pair here. So, so you know, um, unlike the, the, the two private methods that we just looked at, um, there's also a, um, um, in the API um, for binary, not binary tree node, for binary tree, um, you know, we have the insert and find, and we also have remove, which you should uncomment before doing task five here for remove. Um, but then like for insert and find, you're going to have a public version of, of remove, which takes a key as input. Um, so notice remove, um, I don't know, the, um, this, this is just how remove was defined in the API in our textbook. Uh, when you ask it to remove a particular key, it, if it finds it successfully, it returns the value of, of the key value pair that it just removed, OK? So, so it is returned. Uh, I, to me, it probably make a little bit more result just to be a, a void function that throws an exception if you ask to remove a key that doesn't exist. Um, but anyway, so that's 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 how this function works. And then the, the private version of remove looks the same, except it takes um, a node, a binary tree node pointer as a first parameter, and then a key as the second parameter. So, um, basically, um, Professor, do we have a, a private uh, method for remove also? Do we have to? Yeah. So remove is going to have a, a public and a private um, um, corresponding methods. Okay, so task one, two, and then task five have public-private um, pairs, basically. Okay, okay so, so yeah. the private is private. Uh, private remove method is going to have two parameters. Then. Yes. So the private method okay. um, has the the similar signature, but then with an additional first parameter, which is a node, a pointer to a binary tree node. Uh, Got you. I 
I missed that. Thank you. Um, so, um, so, so back to the implementation for the remove for the private. This is for the the describing the private recursive uh, remove implementation. Um, So um, um, our, our base case is that um, if, if, um, if the node, that first parameter for the private remove, the, the, which is a, a, a node, um, if it's the null pointer, that means that our binary search basically. So, so we're really doing a binary search here, both for the remove and the find. Uh, and the insert um, um, on a binary tree structure. Um, so if, if the null is null, that means that our search failed um, and you should throw um, a binary uh, tree key not found, right? Um, So otherwise, um, so we might have found the key, uh, and that's where we have to do the kind of the hard remove part. Uh, but but we might not have failed, but we might not have found the key yet. So our general case is um, if the key that we want to remove um, is left from the current key, um, call remove recursively on the left subtree. Um, So you know, um, remove is returning. Um, um, oh, um, 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 so I, I probably made a slight mistake when I was describing. So the private function um, differs in the API from the public function in two ways. All right. So not only does it have a node as input, it's not going to be returning a value. Um, as um, um, as the result, it needs to return um, a, a binary tree node pointer um, as the result as well. So, so you do have to actually change the signature um, of this function. I, I guess uh, maybe I didn't um, um, emphasize that, but that's kind of the same for the find as well. So, so maybe I skipped over that or forgot, but um, for the private version of find, you have to do something similar. So it should be returning um, uh, no, I'm, I'm wrong. So, so um, uh, forget that. So, find is a lot simpler um, um, than um, these others. The, the insert, uh, we did have to return like a binary tree node. Um, and, and we described that for task one. Um, so, so, that's kind of why I skipped over that. Uh, but yeah, it's returning a node instead of being like a, a void function, right? So again, for our remove, um, 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 we have a function, the remove function returns a value instead of being a void function, but the private version, we're changing the return value to be a, um, a binary tree node pointer here. So if I didn't, hopefully I didn't confuse people, but, but yeah, that is a difference on the, uh, the remove here. Um, so kind of our recursive um, who we want to remove is less than the current node. Uh, call remove recursively um, on the left subtree, but remove is going to be returning a node. So you should be, um, and, and you know that could be the result of deleting, you know, rearranging our tree a bit. So um, you should assign the return result from that recursive call back to the, the left pointer, right? So the node's left pointer um, should be set to be the result of calling remove recursively on the left side. Uh, and, and, and you know, likewise, if the key is greater, you need to call remove recursively on the right subtree. Um, the right subtree should be returning a, a node pointer, and that should be assigned back to the, the our node's right uh, pointer, basically. Right. Um, 
but then otherwise, um, 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 if it's not less than, if it's not greater than, that means it's equal. That means that we found the, the key, um, the, the, the node that we want to remove from the tree here, all right? Um, now I see that my, ugh, I need to fix my, my readme here, so, um, um, so there's kind of some steps, uh, A, B, C, D here for the, um, for this case. Um, so if we find the key that we need to remove, um, just follow these steps. So, so start by making uh, uh, a new temporary pointer that points to this node, uh, because we want, we want to return this node, right? Uh, well, that's what we're going to do here. Um, and uh, there, there's a couple of actually easy cases for removal. So um, if this if this node happens to be um, if it doesn't have a, a left subtree, um, it, it means one of two things. It means either that this leaf was a node. So, so if it doesn't have a left subtree, it might not also have a right subtree. Um, and leaf nodes are real easy to delete, right? So those are kind of like um, a, an easy special case for, for when we've found the node to delete. So to, to delete like a leaf node, um, um, we just can just delete this node. So if we just return the right subtree of this node um, and then dynamically delete this node. So that's why we make a copy, a temporary pointer here, because we need to call delete on this node, right? So, so say delete node or whatever you called the, that first parameter um, for our function. But then you need to also uh, return um, Um, the, the right um, subtree here, right? So, um, so there's actually two different ways you could do this. So, so we could have created a temporary pointer. Um, you should probably follow the way I describe it here. So, so the way I describe it is you have the, the temporary pointing to node. So, so you want to actually delete um, So you should be careful about this here, um, but um, um, if, if you have your temporary pointer point to the node, um, you want to return the, the, the node's right subtree, right? But yeah, if you just delete, um, uh, your node, then um, 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 you you freed up that memory. So so you, so yeah, you have to be kind of uh, careful about accessing something that you just deleted. You shouldn't do that. So so yeah, do I have an error in the description here? So um, so you might need to set your temporary pointer to be um, um, the right subtree because that's what you want to return. And then you could delete this node and then re and then. Uh, return the, uh, the the temporary pointer that's returned that's pointing to the right subject. Okay. So yeah, in any case, uh, maybe I'll I'm gonna have to go back and think about this and um, maybe fix this if this is incorrect here. But but be careful. The, the general principle is right. If you call delete on something, you should not then be accessing that pointer. Although it might still work. But but if I call delete on 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 a node, which is a pointer pointing to some dynamically allocated memory, uh, I shouldn't then access, you know, call like node, like a method on node um, to access the right subtree. Um, so, you know, however I'm describing this here, um, you should get a pointer to the right subtree first, then delete node, and then return that safe pointer, the, the, the one that you didn't delete. Uh, which should be still pointing to the dynamically allocated um, right subtree 
right right node, which could be the, the top of a subtree. So. Um, okay, so recall um, um, that was um, uh, B was if if the left subtree was null. Um, which means that it was either a leaf and only had a right subtree. If, if, if left was um, not null, um, that means either um, it only has a left child or it might be have both a left and a right subtree. So it might have both a left and a right child, okay? So that's, that's where we're up to part C here, right? Um, So you want to check. So, so if so we already checked that left um, um, was null, um, and it must not have been null if you if you skipped over and didn't do B here. But so if left was not null, but if right is null, if 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 it doesn't have a right child, that means it only has a left child. If it only has a left child, um, You know, remember, we're deleting this node, so that means that everything on the left child must be less than this node. So it would be safe to simply replace this node with our left subtree, which is what we're doing on the case C here, right? So if, if it only has a left child, doesn't have a right child, um, we want to get the left subtree um, and, and set that as the node to be returned, right? And then delete this node. So, so again, um, uh, my description here, uh, I'm not certain if it's completely consistent, but um, you might want to set the temporary pointer to be the, the left um, subtree pointer, then delete this node, and then return that temporary pointer, right? So it should be safe to return that after, after you delete, if you point it to the, the, the left subtree. All right. And then all of that is kind of prelude. So, so all of that, um, the, the most difficult case for the remove, and this is the reason why, you know, if, if, if we, we could have handled all those previous special cases relatively simply, but if you if the node you want to delete has both a left and a right subtree, uh, we actually have to do some manipulations of our tree structure, right? Which is what the, the get minimum and the delete minimum um, are there for, right? Um, so basically what we're doing conceptually here um, is um, we want to find the node on the right subtree. So, so remember, we're, we're at the location of the node we want to delete. So for the node on the right subtree, the, the minimum node on the right subtree, that would be the next value that is um, the next one above the value that we're going to delete. So conceptually, what we want to do is we want to replace the node that we're deleting with the minimum node value on the right subtree. Um, okay, if that makes sense. Again, you know, drawing this out can help a lot to understand what's happening here. Um, so, um, so we want to delete the node that we're at that has both a left and, and a right subtree. Uh, before we can delete the node that we have, uh, we want to find the minimum node on the right subtree. Um, and, and what we're going to do, instead of deleting this node, we're going to like swap this node's values with the values of our minimum nodes. So, so we're not really deleting this node. We're going to delete that minimum node. We're, we're first going to swap the value of that minimum node with this node's value. Right, which is safe to do because that is the next value in um, um, in in the sequence from this value. Um, so, so we first use find minimum to find the value uh, to, to find the node with that minimum value, 
Um, and then we're going to we're going to use like set key um, and set value uh, to copy the value of the key the, to copy the key and the value from that minimum node to, to be the, the new key and value of this node. Then finally, um, we're going to call delete minimum on the right subtree, right? Um, and we should be setting. Um, um, you know, the way this delete minimum works is it returns a possibly a new node, right? So we should be setting our right node subtree to be the result of calling that delete minimum, right? So yeah, again, I mean, the effect is, is if we copied the minimum values uh, in that right subtree, uh, which is the next closest value to this node that we're trying to delete, um, so, so, so we copied those to be the new key value for, for the, the node that we found in, that we found that we're being asked to delete. Um, and then we delete that minimum node by calling the delete minimum, right? So, so we, we use find minimum to find the value, to find the node so we can copy the key and the value. And then we re use delete minimum to actually delete that node out of our right subtree. All right, so a lot of steps to do on this. Um, you should break it up. Um, so the tests for um, task five um, should be broken up into. So if we look at the ta test for task five, there should be more than one test. So assuming you've already got the task three and four passing. Um, Um, oh well, yeah. I guess that the, um, the 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 test for task five, the first one is a test on like a where the key value pairs are ints, or so int and int. Um, so I guess what I was starting to say wasn't quite right, but um, um, uh, you should be able to get the, the uh, to do those steps kind of one by one. So the first test is to remove something that ends up being a leaf node. So, so for, this, for this tree that we do all of our tests with, um, if we remove the node value that has a value of one, that should have been a leaf. So, so that should have just been, um, um, where we found, found it, um, but um, um, it was case, B, where it was either uh, a leaf node or it only had like a right um, subtree, right? So you can try getting that to work first. Um, um, so yeah, like like the test one, two, and, and the, the test of remove uh, of, of the value three only has, uh, it's not a leaf node, but it only has a right node. So. Although, yeah, I mean, um, if you implement, for example, the, the base cases, like, like failing, you know, th this should be passing after you implement. Maybe I should have put that as one of the first tests. Um, but because, yeah, if you do it in the order shown here, um, um, the first thing that you got to get working is that it ought to be failing if we request to remove um, an item that's not in the tree. Um, So, oh, um, although, yeah, that um, uh, I should probably maybe rethink my tests here a little bit. So, yeah, if you don't remove, if you're not removing the 13 yet, that, that test won't be passing until you're actually removing. Um, uh, because, yeah, 13 is in the tree initially before we start doing our tests here. So yeah, disregard what I said there. Um, yeah, if it was me as a hint, I should probably fix this for the next time we do the assignment. But um, um, probably should have had you know at least testing the the the, the initial base case. 
So given this tree of values, um, an easy check would be uh, if you tried to remove a value that wasn't in the tree initially, um, like, I don't know, uh, 42 or something, right? Um, so you should be throwing an exception if, if you uh, uh, have your base case first working, um, right? Yeah, I should definitely put that in there. Um, or, or you might definitely, for people that are watching this or watch this um, uh, after the fact, and that might be a good first test because that would check to make sure you got your base case thrown the exception uh, before you start doing any of the recursion. So, well. So. Um, all right. Yeah, so we've gone pretty long here. So I'm gonna wrap up. Do we have any kind of final questions on, on things uh, here? Or remove or any other part? Um, okay. Yeah, so as usual, you know, good luck on that. Uh, it sounds like the people that were here had, had already been started, at least past task two or three or so, so that's good. Um, yeah, feel free to email me if you have questions on things um, as you're implementing these or, you know, use the GitHub comments. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and end the session there and I'll post this as usual.